the voice of God sounds from the word of God when we study God's word when we look at God's word the voice of God sounds from God's word and the voice of God is a cure to the noise of life <laughs> The voice of God is a cure to the noise of sickness. The reason why that stagnation in your career is there is because it has not had the voice of God. Once have God spoken, twice have I had that power belong to God. So that power is surviving because the voice is not yet sounding. If you have access to the voice, you will terminate that noise. This morning, every negative voice in your life, I sound the voice of God that they are subdued in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. This shall be your own month of breakthrough on every side. Yeah. It shall be your month of breakthrough on every side. Yeah. This month, by the grace of God, like we have heard, but it's been declared as the seasons of glory. And I remember by the grace of God, the text message or the what I sent out to people as God laid upon my heart. You see, anything I post on social media is not like I feel like oh, I don't feel like it. It's as God laid in my heart. That's why my social media is not meant for, you know, like, oh, it's not meant for that. It's to bless lives. To make it a platform for change. I wrote there, as I heard my spirit man, this month, every single day, you shall be recording testimonies. And guess what? Since the 1st of October, there's no day, though it has been like that forever, but the rate has increased. From the 1st of October till as at yesterday evening, rate at which I hear testimonies from people's life, they are amazing. So, should in case you are not aware, plug in. Because yours is starting from this second. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's why, you see, Papa was saying yesterday, even, yeah, on yesterday, that, no, on Monday, on Monday, because we did feet washing on behalf of all of you. You know, I just discovered that, um, the, you know, on Monday was a public holiday in Nigeria. And as a result, I think they quickly, I mean, they declared feet washing um, for, uh, for those worshippers in Nigeria. So we were just, we just got it and we hooked up. Ah. So I started calling those who I could call who were around because the service was almost ending when we got to see it. It was like 10 minutes more. So I just called those staff that were around and one or two individuals, I, yeah, somebody was passing. I said, come, 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 come. So we did feet washing on behalf of every member of the church. So, and when that is being done, I said I will make, let you know that throughout this month, you'll be stepping into millions. Yeah. Stepping into fortune. Yeah. Stepping into breakthroughs. Yeah. Stepping into change of levels. Yeah. Testimonies will be following you everywhere you go. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Why am I saying this? So that you can be conscious of what is being done on your behalf. Now, when your great-grandfathers, they commit error, you suffer the curses. Which means they can do things for you. They can use your money for you. In the same way, we have washed our feet for you. Therefore, shame is washed away. Yeah. Reproach is washed away. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Teaching series for Sunday services is riding the waves of glory. Riding the waves of glory. Riding the waves of glory. When you hear testimonies, next thing is glory to God. So testimonies and the word glory goes together. Every time you read testimonies, you say, ah, glory to God. Glory to God. Testimonies are glorious because they are act of the wonderful God. So this month, to me, the way I see it is your month of testimonies on every side. Yeah. Psalm 63 from verse 1 to 3 is the anchor scripture. Oh Lord, thou art my God. Early 
will I seek thee? My soul tests for thee. My flesh longer for thee. In a dry and a thirsty land where there's no water. To see the power and the glory. So I've seen the sanctuary. Every time we create time for God, we give him opportunity to change our lives. If you must ride on the waves of glory, you must have a platform to ride. You see people, yeah, please, can you give me a ride? If there's no car, there's nothing to ride. So, this month, we are focusing on the Holy Ghost helping us to ride on the ways of glory. The manifestation of the Spirit is for our profiting. The manifestations of the Holy Spirit, they are for our profiting. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with us. To profit, to profit, to profit, to profit, to profit. As a believer, you don't have the gift of the Spirit. You don't have the fruit of the Spirit. You don't have the Son Spirit of the Lord. You are empty. As a believer, you don't have the gift of the Spirit, not even one. You don't have the fruit of the Spirit. You don't have, I mean, the nine fruit of the Spirit, the nine gift of the Spirit, the Son Spirit of the Lord. All you have is just, I have Holy Spirit. You are empty. You are not full. Because the fruit of the Spirit is what establishes the presence of the Holy Spirit. Joy. Long suffering. Some people, they cannot even endure one day. They say, no, it can't work. The fruit of the Spirit is what gives us the capacity to be a believer. Hallelujah. Somebody shall I'm going to shut my own back. I don't take that nonsense. That's not my nature. It shows you are not spiritual. Anyone that your nature is higher than God's nature, you have lost the place of being a believer. The nature of God is being, um, is being, is being established in us by the Holy Spirit. Some people can be angry for one year like I used to be. For one year, they can be angry with somebody. For one year, they will not even, if the person, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what is it? Mm -hmm. Ah, that's my nature. <laughs> that's a bad nature. The nature that is not, never happy. Nature that's always sad. Any nature that makes you sad is a bad nature. <laughs> it's a killing nature. You don't know when you're angry, your blood, your your, your blood vessels, they are in, in trouble. You are putting on that Instead of you, you know, it's what you're supposed to release, you are, con you are congealing. They are co together. So the blood is, the, the capillaries are fighting, the, you know, everything is just moving. And you think you are happy. Yes, I'm showing him. You are showing yourself. He greets you. Now, your body is not balanced. You think you're happy. So, the fruit of the Spirit among others is joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, we need the endowment of the Spirit for us to be able to ride on the ways of glory. Because the endowment of the Spirit is ordained for our supernatural in life. Look at it. You want to be pregnant here now, anyone that wants to be pregnant and choose to believe you are pregnant now, that's all. No prayer. No prayer. You are pregnant. You say, don't say amen. You are pregnant. Forget. It is because when God writes on your voice, it becomes a force. When God writes on your voice, it becomes a force. Somebody was there. Somebody called me from Limpopo on Thursday. By the grace of God. And she said, her mother has been deaf for the past 14, 15 years. And when they called me, she said, because she's been hearing several testimonies in Pretoria. So she said, when she gets to Limpopo, she's going to call. So she called. She said, Pastor, please, can you pray? I said, ah, are you asking me? Please. No, use please. It's a privilege for me. 
I said, put the phone on speaker. I'm putting her ears. And immediately we pray. You know, as my as it is, I said two minutes, five minutes. I said, no, don't even check now. In the same second, the woman's ear opened to the glory of Jesus. Same second, no later. No later. Somebody was even in my office. No later. No later. Somebody sent me a message. She said, Pastor, I'm very, very sick. I want to go to clinic. So I sent a message on WhatsApp that you are here right now. By the time he sent a message later, he said, Pastor, I didn't go to clinic. I was already okay. Just by reading the message, we operate in the supernatural when we are in due. We operate beyond human explanation. People may not understand you, but they cannot deny the effect of your presence. They can't understand your operation. The rate at which by privilege I see myself using WhatsApp. I told someone, you see, when you see me on WhatsApp, I'm not playing. If you check my WhatsApp, you see it's majorly challenges that God is solving. Not maybe I'm playing. You see, what you have time for that? It's for the change, removing tears from the eyes of people. Look at that boy that will have died two weeks ago. Gadget upon gadget. But just by what that woman sent me a message a week after. He said, I can't imagine my daughter, my brother son, I think son, leaving. She was in IC, he was in ICU. Just by WhatsApp, Jehovah released the person. This day, by the force of the spirit, I decree your victory in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Where is the Thursday Friday? It's prompted in my spirit, man, for us to have a special crusade. Prayer and fasting for a sudden change of story. Remember, I did one with some people last two weeks ago. And why? Why should you be coming to church and your life is not seeing a change? Why do you dress well when you cover shame? Why should you have a Bible and your life is crippled? Why should they be saying, ah, he's a Christian, no, and you know inside you that your Christianity is empty? So, thank God we are engaged in the Holy Ghost this month. Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, we'll be having an operation that I called No More Delay. If some things does not happen for you in October, November, I'm telling you till next year, they'll just know that. If some things does not happen for you, October, for some people, it's till next year or till forever. If it doesn't happen, in October, so you must be desperate. And how to enforce desperation is to use a weapon of the Holy Ghost. So, if you're interested, which I expect that you should be, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no more delay. No more waiting for what is due to you. What's supposed to have many of us are supposed to have changed levels a number of times, but some things are stopping it. So, where is it? Thursday, Friday, we are fasting and praying, engaging the Holy Ghost for conquest, engaging the Holy Ghost for change of levels. We are doing it here, and um, I pray that everyone's story will change in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm, I mean, Isaiah 61. 1 to 7. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. The anointing of the Holy Spirit is to preach good tidings. And not only that, sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for morning. From today, every morning in your life is over. Amen. Secret tests are finally over. Amen. Whatever makes you to take your blanket and cover your face and cry, from this day, as the Lord lives, it is over. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please believe in this declaration as if it's God. Believe in this declaration as if it's God. Don't take it like this young chap. 
Don't take it like this small boy. Don't take it like who is speaking. When you take it, just, I said the first thing God spoke to me this morning. Because, you know, I got home very late yesterday, around 11, 10, 30, 11, 11, thereabouts. And I've left home since Friday morning. No, I was so tired. So, I only slept for like three hours there, but by the time I woke, I just had. When God sends, God speaks through the saints. Which means everything I'm saying now by privilege, God is the one sounding it. If you take it as God, you eat the good. Therefore, I speak this morning, whatever is stopping your laughter is crushed in the name of Jesus. Whatever is making you to have burdens, concerns, tensions, I decree they are dissolved in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall I receive? Say it's mine. From today, it's a new day. It's a new day. It's a new day. And so shall it be. Like I said just now, we engage the anointing of the Holy Spirit to ride on the waves of glory. We engage on the anointing of the Holy Spirit. When you are riding on the anointing, you are riding on his power. Riding on the anointing of the Holy Spirit is riding on the power of the Holy Spirit. And what is the power of the Holy Spirit? The power that backed up creation. The power that backed up creation. Without the Holy Spirit, nothing was being created. That is to say, it was the Holy Ghost that moved, that caused God to speak. We know the story in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Even Jesus could not do anything until the anointing came. Luke 4, verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. But why did the fame go round about? Verse 18. Because the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit came upon him. And that's why he could ride on the wings of the Spirit. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. You shall be anointed this morning. And the spirit will come upon you. Yeah. And you will go and manifest the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He said, the spirit is upon me. Because he has anointed me. Like you all are aware in logic, the premise for the spirit is anointed. Because without the premise, you can't establish that statement. To preach the gospel to the poor. <laughs> what does it mean? As this anointing comes upon you, there is riches in this anointing. Amen. The anointing turns a pauper to the prospered. The anointing turns the impoverished to the prosperous. So this morning, as anointing comes on you, the anointing for prosperity comes upon your life. Amen. Poverty is finally over. Amen. Remember, the same way I'm by privilege declaring now, the same way some I was declaring and somebody received pregnancy. For his wife. Not even for him. For his wife. So, if you are here and you are hearing the same declaration, please receive it. So that it can become a testimony in your life. He said, he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted. Maybe you are downcast. You are tired of life. You are about throwing the towel. And things are absolutely upside down. The good news is here. As this oil comes on your head, every trace of secret tears, every trace of being broken hearted, today, be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Anywhere going through emotional pain or trauma, you remember, you keep remembering how somebody raped you. 
You keep remembering how somebody duped you. You keep remembering how your life could have been better, but because of some bad friends. You are remembering how your life started well, but now it has it is nose diving. I decree in this service, everything is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything is changing in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the reason for church, among others, is to experience a change. We come to church to see a change. We come to church to see a change. As we behold him like in a mirror, we are being changed. 2 Corinthians 3, 18. As we behold him, as you are seated now, you're not looking at me, you're looking at God. As we behold him, because he said, I will give you pastors that will represent me. So, as I speak, I speak the mind of God by privilege. As we behold him, we are being changed. We are being changed. We are being changed. So, if you can see him, not me, if you can see him, a change is ascertained. A change is established. And I decree any change you desire, receive in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, as we build him like in the mirror, we are being changed into his image. But how? From glory to glory. From glory to glory. This morning, your level is changing supernaturally. Your level is changing supernaturally. Hear this? Somebody is here having a small shop now. Before the end of this month, you have times five of that shop. You are having a small outlet now. Before the end of this month, the outlet shall be multiplied by five. God is changing your level in the name of Jesus Christ. You can't be anointed and still be defeated. You can't be anointed and still be stranded. The anointed cannot be stranded. Anointing will fight. The anointing cannot be stranded. With the anointing, endowment with power is automatic. And with empowerment, a change is imminent. When you are endued with power, you experience a change of levels. This month, by all means, you will share a testimony. Of a change of levels in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Like well aware, today is a comedy of laughter. And no matter how hard it is, when you are in charge, you laugh. <laughs> no matter how hard it is, when you are in charge, you laugh. No matter how hard they say, when you are in charge, you laugh. When things are hard in an organization, and you are in charge, you still eat. Your workers may not eat, but you will eat. Because you are in charge. Every time you are in charge, no matter how it is hard, you still laugh at the situation. Glory to God. Why is it like that? Let me give us a good example by privilege. Think about it. When you have the key to where resources are and everybody is sweating, you just be smiling. They are looking for the key. Go, 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 go. And he didn't consult you. He just be looking. He just be looking. See, they didn't ask you. He just be smiling. In the same way, step out of your situation. Step out of your circumstances. Step out of that cage you think you are. And stand like God. Who has the solution? <laughs> the way you are laughing will molest the devil. Step out of that situation. Maybe now, no money, no nothing. Step out. And now watch it like a film. Stand like God. You forget. God in me. Christ in me. In the hope of glory. I have the answer. When you start laughing, things will start changing. This understanding is a force. Step out of that challenge and laugh the same way God will laugh at it. 
Step out of that barrenness and behave like you are the one controlling barrenness. Step out of that joblessness and behave like the one who will give job to others. When you start picturing life like that, you are in charge. And why is it like that? Ephesians 2, verse 5 and 6. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, verse 5, verse, verse 5, it says, even when we were dead in sins, at quicken us up together with Christ, by grace he has saved. And verse 6 now says, and had raised us up together. And made us to sit together. If you look at it, together, together twice. In heavenly places, in Christ Jesus, he has raised us together. 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 So you are gathered with Jesus where there is no sorrow. Where you are gathered, they don't cry. So why are you crying? Where you are gathered, they don't shed tears. Hear this? Where you are gathered is a control room of the world. So, when you are seated with Jesus, you are seated with the control or the controller. That is what informs my statement every now and then. Relax. Relax first. Just relax, no matter what. And I remember in, during the week, I had my spirit man when I was thinking about some issues and he said, the same way you tell others relax, you too relax. <laughs> I started laughing. Because my mind was thinking about one or two, three, I mean some things. And he said, the same way you tell others relax, you too relax. <laughs> I started laughing. <laughs> it's okay, fine. I also relax. Since he said I should relax, the way I tell others to relax. When you relax, you're in charge. When you're under tension, you have lost the battle. When you relax, you are showing the confidence in God. You are showing the assurance of God's power. Psalm 2, verse 104. Where we enjoy conqueror's laughter is a function of where we are seated. Psalm 2, verse 104. Why do the eating rich and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from, from us. He that seated in heavens shall laugh. And the Lord shall have them in the rich. Why will he laugh? Because he's in charge. <laughs> Look at this book. <laughs> oh, me. You. Now, when you will laugh, the way God will laugh, you have won the battle. He said, He that seated in heaven shall laugh. It's a laughter of more than conqueror. It's a laughter of the mentality of being in charge. It's a laughter of who are these ones? Imagine a cockroach chasing you. Even that statement is, a, is derogatory. Imagine a cockroach chasing you. If they catch you, if human beings catch you, they will bind you. Because now they know you are sick. It's no more normal. You can't be seeing birds, you know, birds fighting and you are running. It shows that you are weak. Now, what am I saying? That says, you, we are in charge of situations. Irrespective, like I've said before, by the grace of God, there is no challenge. They brought, somebody came to church, you know, last week. I think came with crutches, went up with legs. That's happened severely, a number of times. No challenge that ever comes away. There is no solution inside you. Okay, let me help us understand now, by God's grace. Any challenge that comes away, whose name are you going to call? What? Where does yours live? So what's your challenge? No, let's, let's analyze it. Any challenge that comes away, who, who do you call? Who raised the dead? Who opened the head of the blind? Who caused people to walk? 
Where does he live? So what's your challenge? Let's just analyze it. Just let this thing enter your bone marrow. Let it enter you. It is this understanding that gives us reason to laugh. I said, God spoke to me some time ago. He said, the power that makes all things happen lives inside you. The power. So you don't need to cry no matter what. You only cry because you want to release some water. You want to waste the water in your body. You know, somebody called me around 2 a.m. some time ago. And she was crying. I said, ah, you are crying. You know what? Let's not waste your, the water in your body. Let me get some buckets. I'll just place it in front of you so that as you are crying, instead of wasting municipalities water, let's use your water. You just use it. She laughed, laugh, laugh, laugh. Somebody crying. <laughs> she started laughing. <laughs> I said, don't waste the water because now, instead of wasting utility bill, just in the water in your body, you just keep it and so that, you know, you'll be using to take your bath gradually. And you don't waste the one that you are paying for. Since you want to release water, release the one you use. So you become a recycling system. She laughed, 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 laughed. Someone that was crying, 2 a.m. When you understand the process, you easily, as I mean, achieve the project. There's a process God has laid down for us to dominate situations. We are in charge. Say, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Say, I'm in charge. I'm in charge. Now, close your eyes at that challenge. Close your eyes. I don't know the challenge you're going through. Everybody has a challenge. Everybody has a challenge. The Holy God doesn't have a challenge. Everybody has a challenge. Now, close your eyes. Picture that challenge. Now, like I said now, step out of it. Step out of that challenge. Step out of it in the realm of the Spirit. Close your eyes. Don't look at me. Otherwise, you see Jesus. Now, as you step out of it, now imagine Jesus being in charge. Imagine the Jesus that raised the dead. Imagine the Jesus that caused the cripple to walk. Imagine the Jesus that has made someone who has, who has been mad in 36 years to be healed. Just imagine it. Imagine that same Jesus inside you. Imagine the Jesus that caused the cripple to walk. And now with that understanding of that power, laugh at that situation. It's over. If I can have that Jesus, imagine it. Please, this is not joking. It's, a, it's not a joking matter. It's a serious matter. Laugh at it. That it's over. It's over. I have the answer. For it's over. Jesus lives in me. Therefore, it's over. Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in me. Jesus lives in me. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Understand it and burst into some laughter that you understand that you are not wasting. It's over. It's over. <laughs> Thank you, God. In Jesus' name, we have engaged. Yeah. If you know that what you've done now is not a waste, start laughing. Don't laugh like a witch. You know, there's a way somebody can laugh beside you, you'll be scared. He, 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 he. You see, ah, then automatically you are scared. Because you're like, um, Laughter or witchcraft. When I mean laugh, I didn't mean laugh like if you were once a witch before, should be the case. And God has changed your story. It is possible now. At least, yes, today is God. Today, I mean, it's so yes, there is God. Should be the case you used to be a witch. Don't exhibit that one here. But laugh the regular laughter that shows that you are in charge. Now, laugh now. Be careful of the laughter beside you. Now, when you start laughing, you start winning. Because the loving side is the winning side. And the winning side is the shouting side. As you laugh now, you are winning the battles. As you laugh now, you are winning the battles. Hear this. If you can be excited, you cannot be limited. When you are laughing, there's a way you laugh, you almost somersault. It's because something is turning inside you. 
And what turns inside you has taught your mind. Your mind has analyzed the statement that made it look like what is this? Then you change. Now, laughter is of the spirit. Hear this? No matter how somebody makes you try to make somebody laugh, somebody that lost a whole family one day can never laugh. Except Holy Ghost takes over. So you can't be funny. To be funny is not to laugh. There's a spirit that makes genuine laughter to come out. Somebody has not eaten three, five days. He said, laugh. Laugh what? If you even say laugh, you, he will slap you. Are you all right? <laughs> because now, he's, the spirit man is dead. In the same way, understand that there's something in you that has the answer to that thing outside you. Without understanding, you speak. You get excited. From today, you will dominate every situation. The devil does not want you to laugh. Because he knows once you start laughing, things will start happening. Once you start laughing, things will start happening. Because the devil is known with sadness. Why? Is it is 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 his headquarters where will ever be his headquarters is hell where people cry with gnashing of teeth where people cry and mourn you will never go there yeah. if it's million you shall a better amen yeah. if you have seen a bit of now we went to plastic view yesterday and um, for evangelism and many sharks got burnt just because somebody forgot a cooker, I mean, a stove, whatever, I don't know, whatever, and went to fetch water. Before she came back, psh, okay, that's it. Ah, this one is not even much. The one with that we, that me, I was there. If you see how fire was running, fire has legs. You remember, I once thought one message like that, there's no small fire. He started from one, just like this, and burnt up to like 50 to 70 sharks. People started packing their loads, packing their beds, as quote unquote ridiculous those things are. When I mean ridiculous, some of us here will not use this, they don't to sleep. Never. You will never use some, some of those things to sleep. But as ridiculous as they look, they are still valuable to them. There is need for God to help us, to help others. I'm telling you. Passion, some of us went there yesterday to, you know, some bought food bought um, stores and gave to them. Some of us, somebody took clothes, went to give to them. You see, and it's so painful that, you know, we plan to bring them, you know, to help them, but the mayor said no, that they will do. But if we got there in the evening, nothing was being done. So if you have any cloth, that's why we sent a message yesterday. I mean, early, late yesterday night, that if you have clothes, you want to give them or whatever, we are still hoping that we'll get some of them to help them this morning. There's no small fire. No. Imagine those people, there's no way they can laugh. That the little thing they are, and you see, they were gas, you know. Po, pa, pa, and burning and running, and people were running. Imagine fire chasing people. That would not be a portion. Yeah. That's not air fire. They are running. What about air fire? Nowhere to run to. Air fire only has entrance, no exits. One way <laughs> you enter, color that's the end, and you can't come back. It's a bottomless pit, as in they throw you inside, and you'll be going till forever. Ah, because of one fornication, <laughs> repent before you get burnt. God will help us. You see, anywhere you don't hear them talk about eternity, Christianity is not there. <laughs> the essence of Christianity is eternity. Eternity. No matter how rich you are, it will end one day. Have you ever seen somebody that took money to the grave? If they try it, the people that buried him, after they've gone, they will open it and carry the money. Because it's not normal. You can't take your money there. But you need Jesus and God will help us. Now, why am I saying this? We need to understand the place of what we carry inside us. Who that has the answer to every challenge around us. But what does it take to enjoy 
laughter. Covenant keys to our heritage of laughter. Number one, God makes people laugh. God makes to laugh. Every engaging believer in a revival. When you are in a revival, God will always make you laugh. When you are in a revival, God will always make you laugh. Genesis chapter 15 verse 24. And Joseph said unto the, his brethren, I die. God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swore to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Every time there's a revival, God will always make laugh. How do I mean? When God visits, God breaks limits. Every time God visits, he breaks, he breaks every limit. Every limit that is not allowing you to move. Because a revival is God's visitation. A revival is the move of God. A revival is the coming of God. Look at it. When Acts chapter 2, the Holy Ghost came upon them from verse 1, like a clothing tongue of fire. Their story changed. They were they burst into tongues. And as they were praying in tongues, everyone gathered to hear what, what happened to them. And through them, the whole city changed. When God visits in a revival, he breaks limits in the life of the revivals. I mean, the ones that are revived. So I like us to understand that this season, God is breaking limits in your life. Amen. There shall be no more limitation in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As a close in this service, I'd like you to know that you cannot carry God and still carry sadness. When God visits you, it destroys whatever is limiting you. When God enters you, it changes everything about you. And God will not be present and you still be crying. Glory to God. I don't know what is making you to cry this morning, but the good news is this. They are all turning to testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Exodus 16 verse 8. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and the morning bread to, to the full, for that the Lord heareth your murmuring, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmuring are not against us, but against the Lord. Verse 35. And the children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited, and they eat manna until they came unto the borders of the land of Canaan. Every time God visits, that's the meaning of the scripture. When God visits you, God changes your story. He brings a change that only Him can deliver. I don't know what you're going through this morning. No matter how hard it is, this morning is turning to laughter for you. This morning is turning to a laughter for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Also, understand, when God makes you laugh, you won't laugh alone. The laughter God gives is a laughter that's, that, 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 that flows everywhere. You can't cover God's laughter. Genesis 21, verse 1 to 6. Genesis 21, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said, and the Lord did on Sarah as he has spoken. And verse 6, the Bible says, God has made me to laugh, and all that are here to laugh with me. When God makes you laugh, you can't laugh alone. When God makes you laugh, now, and the laughter that God brings is the laughter of testimonies. God will not make you laugh without carrying out an act. It is the act of God that brings the laughter of men. When God acts, laughter emerges. When God acts, changes is imminent. So you are laughing because God is happening. This morning, God is making things to happen for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone looking for a job here, yeah, if you choose to believe, before 12 noon of Wednesday, you have your jobs in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ.
say, I receive it. I receive it. Say, I believe it. I believe. Say, it's mine. it's mine. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. 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 Amen. So, this morning, you are laughing at the devil. Yes, you are laughing at the devil. Yes, because God has changed your levels. Yes, devil never imagine you get to that level. But by this anointing, you are entering that level. Yes, In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, the word that is yours that is being contested. By this anointing, you are entering that new level. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are surmounting every devil in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. God shall laugh. Because God is in charge. As I conclude this morning. The laughter that comes from happenings. Ends easily. But the laughter that comes from the Spirit. Does not end. Joy, speakable, full of glory. The joy or the laughter that comes from the Holy Ghost does not end. So this morning, as we rise up in a short while, we shall be receiving the anointing of the Holy Ghost that will put us perpetually in the center of laughter forever. Amen. Which means from this service, crying, weeping is over forever. Amen. If you ever cry, it shall be tears of joy. Amen. Tears of celebration. Amen. 